Alrighty, what's up everybody? Today I was gonna bring up the issue that Oldsmobile engines can have with oiling at higher RPMs. Um, what happens is, basically at higher RPMs, the oil will pick up, well the oil pump will pick up all of the oil in the pan and send it all upstairs to the top end of the engine. And while you're consistently up there at high RPMs, the oil will not come back down. It'll just stay up in the heads. And um, I'll show you why. Now there's a couple things you can do to correct this problem, but if you're on a street application and you're not winding this thing up to like 5,000 RPMs and beyond a lot, I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not doing shit about it. I'm just gonna say, fuck it. But um, it's also another reason that I think it's important that they need all 10 of these valve cover bolts. As we're in 77, they dropped them down to six. Here you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And uh, what happens is, see, you can see how it's got all the holes drilled. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. Bear with me one second. Yeah. All right. All right, we're good to go. What happens is oil lays in here. Let me get a flashlight. It's got one in my pocket. Oil likes to lay right here, right under the valve springs. <clears throat> and um, your oil drain back holes are right here, one in the front and one in the back. But the thing is, they're, they just sit on the wrong kind of an angle. Instead of them going straight down, they go that way. And you can see inside there, shit, hang on. There's your problem right there. The oil has to run on a horizontal angle to get through those holes. They don't just drape down. Same with the back one. It's so hard to get the camera in there. Sorry for the shakiness of this video. It's fucking hard. See in there? There's your oil drain back holes. The oil will just sit in this whole valve train under here and just turn into a swimming pool. Now that being said, most of you guys out there I mean, not as good gearheads, but most fucking people out there don't change their oil. And guess what happens when you don't change your oil? Not only does this engine have a design flaw from brand new, but when you don't change your oil, oil turns to sludge, and sludge turns into cake, and these holes plug up very easy. I remember when I took this engine apart and I cleaned it out, I dug not even sludge out of there. It wasn't even oil anymore. It was just a gray paste. Um... Yeah, it was like primer gray paste. It was freaking disgusting. But anyways, like I was saying, what happens is at higher RPMs, it'll send all the oil up to these heads and it won't find its way down fast enough. And it could potentially harm the lower end of the engine. And in some cases, with racing applications, people have destroyed bottom ends of these engines because <laughs> no oil pressure. But like I said, under normal driving applications, you'll be fine. I remember cleaning these holes out. I was using screwdrivers, pipe cleaners, all kinds of shit, and the parts washer. This is just a quicker video today. Um, there's a couple things you can do to pre prevent this. Hang on, who's calling me? Oh, give me one second here. Alrighty, I'm back. I had to take that phone call. It was actually pretty important. Um, 
Anyway, I forget where we left off. Basically, you guys saw the holes in the heads. It's a fucked up design, but it, it is what it is. Uh, I've never had an issue with the Cutlass or anything like that, or any of my other Oldsmobile engines. Um, what I know you can do to help this problem is they make restrictors you can put, like oil restrictors, that'll keep oil from escaping the bottom end really quickly. But what it does, and it sucks, is it'll block off the camshaft. And it'll basically take away oil from the camshaft, which isn't the best idea in the world. But apparently lots of people do it all the time, and it works. But what you can run into then is you can get your lifters to collapse because if they lose too much oil pressure they won't pump up anymore and they'll go they'll basically bottom out and your valve train will go start slapping around and as soon as you let off the gas you get your oil pressure back and the lifters will pump up again but also another thing they sell is uh oil restrictive push rods which is that's the way i would go if i was worried about this problem uh basically It'll oil the bottom end, it'll send the oil up to the cam and the uh, lifters, and once it hits the push rods, it'll back it up, and it'll restrict how much can get to your valve train. And uh, I think that's a safer direction to go. Also, a misconception people have is, well, I'll just stick a high volume oil pump in it, maybe that'll help with my oiling issue. Well, that's not the case, because you're going to send even more oil upstairs and deplete the bottom end even quicker. So... Another thing you can do is you can get a... These engines come with 5-quart standard oil pans, but Toronados come with 7-quart oil pans. You can get one of those, but then again, you also have to get a longer oil pickup tube to reach to the bottom of that pan. And I don't like low clearance issues, because my driving habits can be crazy sometimes. I like to tear through people's backyards and fucking off-road and jump medians to make U-turns and shit. So, that's another reason I don't like long tube he headers, but... Anyway, if you're worried about, like, ground clearances, stay away from the 7-quart pan, because they hang down low. I'd say just go with some oil, or, yeah, some restricted push rods, and you should be good to go. I know today's video wasn't the best quality, but it is what it is. I haven't posted on here in about a week and a half, and this is a subject I did want to shed some light on. Uh, it's a well-known problem in the Oldsmobile world. If you go on Olds forums and shit like that, or... Any older Oldsmobile guy knows this problem by heart. But if you're like a Chevy guy or a Mopar guy or a Ford guy or even a Pontiac guy or some shit like that, you may not know that much about this issue. So I think this problem only comes into play, like I said earlier, about 5,000 and up RPMs, which I don't push my engines that hard. And if I do, that's a shifting point for me. So... Alright you guys, have a good afternoon, I hope you had a good 4th of July yesterday, mine sucked, I stuck working all damn day, and then we got raped by people wanting to watch fireworks and shit in Harrisburg, so, alright you guys, I'll catch you on the flip side, see you later, I'm out.